Have you ever wondered how golf YouTubers get shot traces like this? Well, let me show you the really simple way that you can achieve it right now. All right, so the first thing you want to do is open up After Effects on your computer and click on New Project. Find the content you want to bring in. So I'm going to be editing this shot here. Then I'm going to drag it down to this new composition. So this is going to make a new comp based on the footage that I brought in. I'm going to go to where I know my tracer is. So I know that I shot last out of this. And I want to stop it just before I make contact with the ball, which is just about here. At this point, I'm going to click on Layer, New, and then Shape Layer. I'll split the layer by clicking Command Shift D or Control Shift D if you're on a Windows machine. Click back onto my layer and then click the pen tool. Now, I know for a fact that this ball ended up in this right tree line. So I'm going to click where it landed and drag to my usual shot shape, which is unfortunately a very high fade, almost a slice. Once I've got my shot shape that I like, I can click down on the properties, go to content, click fill, and then just delete the fill. So it leaves us with this outline of my shot. So at this point, I'm gonna click into stroke properties, bring this up to about 12, anywhere between sort of 10 and 15 is personal preference. For 4K content or 4K footage, works well. At this point, I usually add in the color that I use for my shot shape, as well as I add in the glow afterwards just to make it more visual. I will leave these numbers at the standard. You can change it. So if you want the glow to be more intense, you can. I myself, that's, it's a stylistic preference. So now once I've got this, I can add dashes if I want. So if you've seen my shot traces before, I do usually add dashes just to make that more visually impactful. And then I'm going to click on add down here in the bottom left and add trim paths. I open up the trim path properties and go to end, drag it all the way down to zero. Then I'm going to start a keyframe. I'm now going to go frame by frame, making sure I've lined up the shot tracer just behind the ball or just on top of it. Now, if you see like here, my line is slightly off. I can zoom out, click the handle and drag that to more of the right shot shape. So I can go forward another frame, click on end, drag this up here. Perfect. Now this doesn't have to be 100% perfect just because the shot usually happens so fast that you're not really going to see it in real time. Unless you're shooting something like 120 to 240 frames a second, not necessary. And I'll usually go to the point where I can't see the ball anymore, which is roughly about there. about there. So now I'm going to skip forward a few frames to a point where it's usually gone past that arc. So I'll feed this up. The further these keyframes are apart, the slower the arc happens. And then I can finish it off down to 100%. Then I can finish it down to 100%. Looks good. I can play through it and render it. Yeah, that works for me. I like that. Now I can add stylistic preferences. So I usually click on taper and taper the ends just so it's not that harsh sort of block. It will have a little bit of a thin to thick to thin again. I'll also add in at the point where it drops down an opacity. Go forward quite a few uh, keyframes, usually to when I've picked up the T or I'm annoyed at the shot that I've hit. Go to opacity and then drop that all the way to zero. There are some different ways you can do this. Yes, you can use shot trace applications. I found that more of a complicated route because I don't use iOS. The application wasn't that great on Android. So I opted for the After Effects method. Now it has worked for me, it's worked very well. I've simplified the workflow so I can do it. I do all my shot traces and then I go and edit the video. I can usually get a shot tracer done in about five minutes. So depending on the length of this video, if you wanted to do something that involves a zoom. So at the moment, I just use a stationary tripod to do my T-shots or just to do any shot on the course. 
if you've got a separate cameraman, first of all, lucky you, or if you've got a DSLR that has a zoom lens, you are gonna need to track the footage so you can really pinpoint exactly where that ball is going. So if you would zoom in, it's still gonna say, stay consistent throughout your video. All right. And there you have it. That is a nice, easy, quick way of doing shot traces. Yes, you can mess around with the timings. You can mess around with the transition so that it all flows very quickly. I found that because I'm just starting out, I don't need all that extra fluff on it. So this works perfectly for me. Let me know if it's worked for you. Give the video a like, comment, share it to a friend. And if you can subscribe, that'd be perfect. Stay tuned for more golf content.